Earlier today, the suspect was charged with 17 counts of murder. President Trump said no parent should ever have to worry about kissing their child goodbye forever and that those killed had a life of promise stolen from them. Watch. Today we mourn for all of those who lost their lives. We comfort the grieving and the wounded. And we hurt for the entire community of Parkland, Florida, that is now in shock and pain and searching for answers. But with the at least 17 dead and more than a dozen hospitalized, we have a duty to find out what went wrong. Did somebody drop the ball here? Let me bring in former FBI Assistant Director Chris Swecker. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Good to be here. So, uh, you know, he was on the FBI radar, but they're saying that they did a search for this kid after seeing a screenshot on that YouTube posting that I read from a little bit earlier. We all know the capabilities of the FBI. If they want to find someone, they can absolutely find someone. If they want to find the digital footprint of this guy, they have all the tools necessary to do that. Did someone drop the ball? Well, I, from what I heard from Special, excuse me, Special Agent Lasky, they had a name, a first and a last name, and they did all their database checks. He didn't pop in any of the databases, so they moved on. I mean, looking in hindsight, they could have dug deeper, possibly done the forensics, done court orders to see who had that Instagram account or that handle. There may have been more they could have done, but if you understand the thousands and thousands of leads that they get of this nature, um, you know, there were there were that was one aspect of this case that where there could have been an intervention, there are many others. Yes, but unfortunately, when we hear about these atrocities and these mass shootings, oftentimes from San Bernardino to Orlando, and now in Parkland, Florida, uh, you have someone who was on the FBI radar. And this is someone kids were joking about, that he was going to come back to school and shoot the place up. Obviously, this is as serious as any incident we've seen in this country. So if you alert the FBI, and if the school knows, what else are you supposed to do? What else can we do as parents to know that our kids are safe from sickos like this? Well, this is risk management in the, in the school systems, and there are a lot, of, a lot of factors at play here. One, they should have a threat assessment or a risk assessment team. When someone's been expelled, as this guy did, and we know it takes a lot to get expelled from schools these days, no child left behind. You know, there's, there is a lot of things that have to happen before you can get yourself expelled. So there's, there has to be a long history there that they could have examined, um, and maybe they did. Then there has to be a team that looks at that and takes action of some kind. In, in this case, with all the red flag warnings that there were, and you'd be hard put to find a case with more red flags and warnings, he was flashing red. I think they could have gotten a restraining order to keep him from even setting foot within 100 feet of that campus and allowed uh, him to get, or would have been able to uh, have him arrested the minute he set foot near that property. All right, but with yeah, all due respect, someone who's going to uh, inflict as much carnage and murder as many people as possible, a restraining order isn't going to do much. I mean, we, we have to be able to talk about this level of mental illness. Because obviously this is an individual who was clearly disturbed. And he was posting pictures of himself uh, with guns and talking about killing police and, uh, you know, trying to get around background checks and various other things. And again, how red do the flags have to be? And, and what can you do? I mean, obviously if someone goes, you pass a background check if you, if you don't have a psychological profile and you don't have a criminal history. And I, I don't understand how background checks are supposed to be the stopgap when there are so many steps ahead of that where you would think a person like this could be treated. Well, if, if there's a restraining order, he would flunk a background check. And the, let's face it, the NICS system, the National Instant Check system, has huge gaps on the mental health part of it. Yeah. You're, supposedly, if you, you have to get vol involuntarily committed or committed in general to a hospital or a mental health hospital. And most of the time, even when that happens, that information doesn't find its way into the NICS system. It's just not reported. It's a huge gap. The NICS system is broken. It is broken, but also, you know, if, if you... I, I guess my problem with this sort of centralization is a one-size-fits-all program uh, 
infringes on the rights of law-abiding citizens who have no intention of committing crimes. I think what we have to do as a society is maybe not lean so much on law enforcement, but really figure out within our families and our communities how to assess and get treatment for someone who is as sick as this and has the capability of committing an act like this. Because, like I said, it doesn't happen in the dark and it doesn't happen overnight. Very true. It's just a, it's a giant gap in the system and there's not enough knowledge in the schools. I mean, we could talk about the workplace as well and men mental health issues in general. By yeah. definition, anybody who does this has to be sick. I agree completely. That doesn't mean they're not cunning and rational and able to plan in, in the way that this Which person did. Which makes them did. even more dangerous. Correct. All right. We got to figure something out. Chris Flucker, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.